It all started with what Peruvians call an autogolpe, a self-coup. Back in December, Peru's embattled president, Pedro Castillo, staged a failed power grab that triggered his ouster and landed him in prison. The protests that followed have left 49 people dead, some of them as young as 15. For over a month, Castillo's supporters have marched and barricaded streets across the South American country, demanding new elections and the removal of current leader Dina Boluarte, and frustration about what rights groups denounce as an excessive use of force is only adding fuel to the fire. They carried mock coffins and effigies of their unwanted leaders in jail cells. Thousands of noisy protesters hit the streets of the capital, Lima, to demand the resignation of their president. There's a lot of indignation, pain and suffering. It's having a psychological impact on those of us who are following what's happening in the provinces, especially our brothers and sisters there who are being killed. It's a total massacre. In Cusco, the ancient capital of the Inca Empire, the caskets were real. Locals bid a public farewell to a killed protester. Elsewhere in the city, Clashes broke out yet again. Police fired tear gas. Protesters responded with stones and slingshot fire. By night, the violence escalated. The turmoil was triggered by the arrest of former President Pedro Castillo last month, after he tried to seize emergency powers to evade impeachment over Slee's allegations. The ensuing crisis has rocked the country. Marcos Quispe was protesting at the airport when he was killed. The police shot him. I don't know who gave the orders. Now we want those responsible for his death to pay for it. Like Marcos, most of the victims hail from working class heartlands loyal to Castillo. Communities united in recent weeks, in protest or in grief, and sometimes both. Well, we can now get some background from Simeon Tegel. He's a journalist based in Lima. Welcome to the day, Mr. Tegel. Uh, this all started with an attempted coup by a president who spent a fairly shambolic 17 months in power. Now, elsewhere, resilient democratic structures would be cause for celebration. Why are people protesting? Um, they're protesting for a range of reasons. Some of them believed in Pedro Castillo, despite his corruption and ineptitude. Um, but some of them are also just furious at the response from the government over the last month. Uh, the government has managed to um, uh, really have a heavy-handed response against these protesters. When they started, there was a range of uh, demands and tactics from the protesters. Some of them were peaceful. Some of them were violent, uh, but the heavy-handed response, disproportionate response, just uh, basically um, with the police using live ammunition indiscriminately has been completely uh, disproportionate. It's been a violation of human rights, and that has enraged the protesters, and I would say it's actually made them now even more determined to carry on protesting and to bring about the fall of Dina Boluarte's uh, government. Mm -hmm. uh how much of an undercurrent is there as well of disenfranchisement and frustration with the political elite of Peru, which is a notoriously unstable country when it comes to politics? I think that's really what's at the root uh, of, of all these protests. Um, the spark was Pedro Castillo's uh, impeachment, but we're talking about decades, even centuries of marginalization uh, of uh, indigenous communities in the uh, Andes and the Amazon. Uh, there's a lot of discrimination and even racism in Peru. And Lima, where roughly one third of Peru's 33 million people live, is in many ways very disconnected, uh, certainly the Lima elite, very disconnected from the rest of the country. Um, and so the view is that people who live in grinding poverty, they may not have running water, or, or electricity um, have just been abandoned, really, by the central government in Lima. And they thought that in Pedro Castillo, they finally had someone who would, who would champion them. And now that he's gone, through his own uh, fault, it has to be said, 
uh, this, this rage has just bubbled up and boiled over. Is the government showing any signs of listening to the protesters' grievances? Not really. Um, they did very quickly uh, bring announce that they were bringing forward elections from 2026 to 2024, but that's still um, uh, 15, 16 months away in April of next year. For the protesters, that's not not good enough. They want immediate elections. And Dida Boluarte is not resigning as the protesters would like, which would trigger new elections straight away. Uh, she's arguing, I think there's some merit in her arguments, that if she does so, the country will just fall into further anarchy. But um, protesters really would like to see the back of her. And I think that as long as she remains president, uh, following all these deaths with uh, a growing public perception that she has blood on her hands, as long as she remains president, I think Peru is going to remain uh, simmering and could boil over again at any point. Simeon Tegel, correspondent in the Peruvian capital, Lima. Great speaking to you tonight. Thank you.